Saints, we're so thankful for the grace of God that we can have another beautiful day. Let's take our scripture reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 62 and 5. It says, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Philippians 1.20 According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that is, in nothing I shall be ashamed, for that with all boldness and always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your word, Lord. We know your word is already blessed. Lord Father, whoever is hearing this, Lord Father, may your word come and inspire them this day, Lord. Be our portion and be our, uh, and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the text of my small exhortation is expectations. Yeah, we see Paul says that God, Christ is my expected. Whether for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Also in Psalms, David is saying, in God is my expectation. Everything that I expect is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And maybe today you have got a lot of expectations for the day. You might have a lot of expectations for this new week. You may have a lot of expectations for this year. As we see in South Africa, elections is coming. And if you speak to many people, they don't have a lot of expectations for whatever will happen in the future of this country because they're all disappointed. But we're so glad we don't put our confidence and expectations on man but on God. He says, if you expect, you must receive. The right mental attitude towards any promise of God will bring it to pass. And maybe you have been disappointed a lot by man. You may be disappointed a lot by your country. You may be disappointed a lot by whatever finance, whatever things that you had your hope on. You may be and a lot of expectation on your work or whatever and you've been disappointed but we're so glad that we're not putting our hopes on man but we put our hopes on God and the right mental attitude to any promise of God will bring it to pass it says uh, when you think in the Bible of some incidents that could have happened just look at the expectation the people were waiting for the next king to take over from Saul even David's own family, his own father, when, when Samuel came to anoint the king, and he said, no, is there another one? And even his father said, it can't be that one. It can never be that one. He's ex but yet God's expectation on us and man's expectation on us is too different. We're so thankful that the eye that God looks at us is not the same eye that man looks at us. When you look in the Bible, there were many people that didn't amount to much. But when God looked at that man, if saw something in them, amen. But yet would man, look at a, take a great man like uh, Herod. Herod was a great man. He was a scholar of scholars. He says, but when, and God wanted, he thought, Herod had an expectation that God wanted a fine temple to dwell in. And when Jesus entered the temple, history says the temple, at when he entered the temple was 46 years of construction at that point and Jesus died the construction continued for another 60 years and yet he said build a, you bring this temple down in three days I'll raise it up they thought they were talking about that great temple meanwhile he was talking of his body that when I die three days time I'll resurrect and Herod thought if he could build a momentum a, a monument fit for God he would be able to please the Lord and people were charged one shekel of gold to enter the temple, which is equivalent to 80 grams of gold today. And every rich Jew donated generously to the building of the temple. And history tells us it was one of the greatest buildings built by man. Herod ensured the finest marble was used so that you could see the shine of the temple from anywhere in the city. He had an expectation that God would be impressed by his efforts and would come and dwell in his beautiful structure. And he had, and yet he had an opportunity to meet the real God of heaven, dwelling in human form, and he wasted his opportunity trying to kill the child. Yet Simeon was given a promise that he would not see death 
until he saw the Messiah. No matter how old or sickly Simeon got, he held on to his expectation that he would see the Messiah before he dies. Nothing could come between Simeon and the promise and he received that he received as each day passed. His expectation was got stronger and stronger until he received his promise. Even with Abraham, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. His expectation was that if God promised me a child, I will have the child. And no matter how many grey hair Sarah had on her head, no matter how much his shoulders stooped, every day that he got older and he got more feeble, the promise got stronger in his heart that one day I will have this child. And Abraham's faith grew stronger until 25 years later, his expectation of the son was so strong that nothing else could happen but the promise had to come to pass. You have to have faith before you can expect anything. Think of Judas Iscariot. He thought that 40 pieces of silver would sort out the problems that he had in his life. How nice he would have sorted all his financial problems if he could have that money. He must have thought of all the people who showed off to him with their nice and expensive things and how he would throw it in their face when he had this money. But once he got the money, he sadly realized the price he paid was too great and he hanged himself. How many of us are selling Jesus today with a, with a, with a great expectation of success only to realize that Judas, what we expected will be not what we received, amen. Even a young man who met Jesus and he asked, good master, what can I do to inherit, to inherit eternal life? And what Jesus presented him was not what he expected. Sell all that you have and come follow me. He had a lot of wealth and he, he never, his expectation was, this can't be the answer. Sell all my things. Imagine how much of poor people I can help with my finances. Imagine how much of, how many churches I can donate my money to. This man is not talking the truth. But yet, he, in one day he finished off in hell because he never received what what God expected of him and what he expected was too different. I mean, his expectations were wrong. But yet we find a man like Peter, who Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom, yet he denied him the next day. Thinking that, imagine the expectation, man would have looked at him, Peter, you're a failure. Peter, you had a chance and you denied Jesus Christ. He was a scared man, yet Jesus gave you the keys and this is how you repaid him. Yet, if we look at him from a manly perspective, we would have thought Peter was a failure. But when God looked at him, he didn't see the man denying him. He saw that man that was walking and his shadow healed people. He saw a man saying, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. And he even said, don't even crucify, he wasn't even scared to die at the end. He said, don't even crucify me like my Lord, crucify me upside down. I'm not even worthy, amen. And that's what, what God sees and that's what God expects from us compared to what man expects from us. The messenger says there's a deep calling to the deep. That's how our expectation should be. The more we see the squeezes being put on the earth, the more the bride of Jesus should be under expectation for his eminent coming. Just like Rebecca, who didn't see Isaac, but looked there. There was no photos or selfies for Eliezer to show Rebecca what, to show Rebecca what Isaac looked like. Maybe she imagined marrying a guy that was tall, dark, with curly hair and brown eyes. But as she hears every day about the character of Isaac, her expectations grew and grew until the day she got to, when she got, that she didn't even need Eliezer to point Isaac. She just saw him in the field and she knew, this is the man that I'm supposed to marry. Her expectations became a reality, amen. What she heard about the message about this man every day. He just grew stronger and stronger until the day she saw him standing in the field. She said, that must be my Isaac, amen. Said, Even when you come to church, you should be here coming with an expectation to hear of Christ. If you expected to see your friend and if your friend was not there, you're going to be disappointed. If you expected to hear your favorite preacher and your favorite preacher wasn't preaching, you're going to be disappointed. But if you came to hear God, amen, and you hear from him, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be excited, amen. Like the prophet said in his early ministry, in a congregation of six to seven thousand people, everyone got healed when he walked on the platform because they were under such a great expectation. But he said it towards the end of his, you didn't find it anymore because the people were not under great expectation to see what God was going to do. Amen. They came to be entertained and 
they left disappointed amen even the time of muhammad ali why do people even remember muhammad ali up to today but yet if i ask you who's the heavyweight champion today maybe you'll have to look at google to find out who the heavyweight champion of the world is yet muhammad ali was a champion 40 years ago but why do we remember muhammad ali so much is because of the competition that he had the, there were great fighters at that time there were so many great fighters and that's why it made this man so great because he was able to compete with those great men had he not had great competition like what's happening today we just forget them easily but this man was remembered because of who he fought in that time how great the expectation how, how great the uh, competition was at that time that he defeated some of the greatest boxers at that time who were great in their own right but that because of him defeating them he became great amen that's why even us today our expectation should be so great as we see the time as we see the world getting worse and worse our expectation for his imminent coming should be greater and greater amen as muhammad ali became great because of the competition the world is getting darker and darker and our expectation for christ coming should be greater as we see more destruction happening as we see more wars happening as we see more financial uh, down downturns we should be getting more into the tune that God is coming soon amen our expectation for his imminent coming should be greater and greater amen may this word uh, be a blessing to your heart dear Heavenly father we so thankful lord that you bless us lord as we see things turning lord to more dire times we also our expectation for your coming becomes greater lord may this word be a blessing to whoever heard it lord be our portion through this day in Jesus name amen amen God richly bless you. Amen.